morning, Nooksack Valley Reformed Church. Happy Mother's Day. I hope today you have the chance and the opportunity to share love and appreciation for the women in your lives who have shown you love and care for you. As we reflect today, uh, I think we all know mothers and women in our lives who have lived very sacrificial lives. They have given so much of themselves and supported and loved us. And so in a very real sense, for many of us, our mothers showed what it meant to love Jesus and to love others and to put others before themselves. And so to the great women in our church family, happy Mother's Day. Secondly, I want to give you a huge heartfelt thank you to our church family this past Monday was absolutely incredible to be surprised and to go outside and see a line of I don't even know how many cars. Uh, we were just absolutely blown away. And it was a great reminder for Tara and the girls and I that although we haven't been here long, you have accepted us and you love us like the rest of the church family. So from the bottom of our hearts, uh, we are so very thankful. Well, today we're going to uh, be looking and turning to the Old Testament. We're going to be reading from the prophet Isaiah. And so I want to encourage you now to open up your Bibles and open them to Isaiah chapter 49. We're going to be reading verses 13 through 18. Uh, but as you're turning there and before we begin to read, let's pray. Lord, as we come to you this morning, it is... Uh, such a gift to come into your presence and we are thankful for who you are we consider your greatness and your glory and we also realize that you are continually faithful to us you don't let us down and it's a gift for us to to experience your faithfulness by opening up your word your word which never changes your word which is true, your word which reflects and teaches us who you are. And Lord, so our prayer this morning is as we open up and read from the book of Isaiah that you would be with us, that your spirit would guide us, and that we can apply your words into our faith and into our lives. We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 49. And we're going to begin at verse 13. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your children hasten back. And those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All of your children gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Well, I have a faint, very faint, very hazy memory from when I was a child, a, a very little child, of my mother rocking me and singing me a lullaby. And I, I remember that I was very worked up. I, I don't remember why that was, but it could have been a, a bad dream or very possibly I was scared of a thunderstorm. Uh, whatever it may have been, I distinctly remember it being very late at night, and I was sitting on my mother's lap in the dark in our front living room, and I remember being mesmerized by looking through this front window and seeing uh, the 
the streetlights illuminating the road in the rain. And as I remember this memory, I, I can hear my mom singing me this lullaby. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. And I remember in that moment, I felt safe and I felt secure. It's a memory, I think, that, that I had uh, really forgotten about until a few weeks ago. Uh, my mom was on the phone talking to Avery and Sydney. Uh, it was the evening. Tara was at work, and it was about to be their bedtime. So as Avery and Sydney got ready for bed, my mom stayed on the line and was talking with them and kind of helped persuade them to brush their teeth and to get their jammies on. And then they got under their covers, and Grandma listened as they said their prayers. And then Sydney asked, Grandma, sing us a song. And my mom began to sing, Hush, little baby, don't say a word. And that memory from my childhood, it came back to me, just as I felt safe and secure in my mother's arms some, some 30 years ago. I knew that my own daughters felt safe hearing Grandma's voice sing to them that night. What would childhood, what would our childhood be like if it wasn't for our mothers? Most of us, thankfully, we have memories of our mothers. They cheered us on, they encouraged us, they pushed us. They, they helped us feel capable, they helped us feel safe. And today on Mother's Day, but hopefully every day, we are thankful for our mothers. Our mothers may be, hands down, the, the most influential people in our lives. In fact, we learn something about God through our mothers. A mother never forgets her child. And so too, our Father God never forgets his children. I think sometimes, some days, depending on what's going on in our lives, it's easy to think that God has forgotten us. And in chapter 49 of Isaiah, the words we just read, the, the prophet tells us how God comforts us and how he is compassionate towards us. And that compassion never ends. And we see this in verse 13. Shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But the reality is God's comfort doesn't always register with us, does it? We, we forget. We are oblivious to God's comfort. We are oblivious to how God is working in our lives. And in the very next verse, in verse 14, Isaiah writes, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Now Zion here in verse 14, it refers to the Israelites, to God's people. And therefore it, it refers to you and me today as believers. And, and we have to admit there are times in our lives where we conclude God has managed to forget us. God has forgotten us. We find ourselves in, in places where we have little hope. We don't know where to turn. And worse yet, God seems completely silent. When you think about it, when we feel this way, when we feel like God has left us out to dry, God has every right to take offense to this, given all that he has done for us in our lives, the faithfulness that he has shown to us time and time again. God could become angry that we would consider this. It would be something like telling our mothers, who have sacrificed so much for our sake, that they don't really love us. Now kids, saying something like that is a good way to hurt your mother's feelings. So don't do that. 
But God doesn't get his feelings hurt. In fact, if we were to, to what we read here in Isaiah 49, if this is really any true indication, then God actually doubles down on his efforts to persuade us that, that he does in fact love us, he does in fact protect us with a love that is, is greater than what we could even begin to measure. And he assures us that we will never be forgotten. So when discouragement overtakes us, encouragement blesses us. And the source of that encouragement comes from God. In fact, here in Isaiah, God gives us four different word pictures, four different visuals to encourage us when we need to hear it the most. And we're going to work through those this morning. The first word picture that we see is that of a mother's arms. And it's found in verse 15. The Lord asks, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? We don't even really have to think about this, do we? Mothers don't forget their children. And the compassion and the love that a mother has for her child never fails. Mothers provide and they protect. There are, of course, uh, exceptions, right? We hear in the news about a, a woman or a mother somewhere who is on trial for uh, abusing her, her children. Or we hear about a mother who introduced her daughter or her son to drug abuse. Things like this happen. As biblically instructed uh, Christians, though, we should be saddened and disheartened by such reports. But we should not be surprised because we know. We know that we still live in a fallen world. A world where sin has its clutches on each one of us. But generally speaking, the truth remains mothers are not like that. A mother never forgets her child. A mother gives all that she can to her children. But look at what God says next. Even if, even if your mother forgets you, I will not forget you. As a mother never forgets her child, so our father never forgets his children. Now, strangely enough, the next word picture, it, it's, it's uh, quite strange, actually. It takes us into the, the tattoo parlor, where God says in verse 16, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. What an image this is. With God, your name is, is never out of his mind, because he has it permanently on his hands. And we see this is a familiar picture in, in Exodus chapter 28. God is instructing Moses how the people of Israel are to worship him. And God tells Moses to take two stones and to engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, the tribes of Israel. Uh, and to take six of the names and put them on one stone and take the other six and put them on the other stone. And then God says that you shall set the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the garments that the high priest shall wear as stones of remembrance. And it says the high priest shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders. So as the priest came and came in and entered and approached God to worship him, the 12 tribes, God's own people, would be placed before God as well. Now, what does this tell us? It, it tells us that God has always taken great care to assure us, to remind us, that as a mother never forgets her child, 
God never forgets his children. There are two more word pictures in, in Isaiah chapter 49, and, and like the first two, they attest to this same truth. With God, we are never forgotten. Let's continue in verse 16. It says, Your walls are ever before me. Your children hasten back, and those who laid you waste will depart from you. Now this is maybe a little more difficult to decipher, but uh, one of, uh, the, really, what this means, what this shows, is a picture of a construction site of sorts. God describes himself as a contractor who has secured builders, and these builders have skill, and they have such skill that, that those who would have hurt and damaged and, and harmed us in the past they simply leave. In God, we find protection. And I think this is a, a picture of real life. Don't you think that uh, with all the hazards and the threats that we come into contact with every day, these things that, that bring danger to our own well-being, there are destroyers that are out to hurt us everywhere. But God says, my builders will outdo your destroyers. Really, this, this verse, verse 16, it reminds me of what the Apostle John says to us in his first letter. Uh, in, in 1 John, John's talking about what happens when we face different threats in this life as a Christian. And he writes in 1 John chapter 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world. Now I think we need to stop and notice here in 1 John chapter 4, John writes these words in the past tense. It's already been done. It's already been completed. And what he is really saying is, is you have already conquered your destroyers. And then he tells us why. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world. And so as a believer, as a Christian, God's Holy Spirit dwells within us. He is greater than anything that can come to us, that comes against us. And again, I think that should remind us this morning, God has us in mind. God's given us the things we need in order to stay faithful. As a mother never forgets her child, so our father never forgets his children. Well, the final word picture we see in this passage is that of a wedding. And we should note here in Isaiah chapter 49, Isaiah is, is writing to a people who have been in exile, who are away from their land. They are dispersed across the land. And, and now in this section of scripture, we, we see how they would all come home back safely. Israel would be like a bride of sorts, marrying the one whom she loved with all of her family in attendance. Verse 18, Lift up your eyes and look around, God says to her. All of your children gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them, your children, all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. That's a beautiful portrayal of God's heart towards his people. This is what God thinks of us, his children. And it's really what compelled him, God the Father, to send his son, Jesus Christ, to the cross so that he would draw us to himself, so that we would feel comforted and protected just as my mother did that night as she sang, that lullaby to me. This world, it can be 
cold and dark and dreary and scary. And we face so many unknowns, but Jesus says to us, take courage. I have overcome this world. And he overcame the world by giving of himself, by sacrificing himself. And the arms of Jesus stretched out on the cross, I believe, and I hope you do as well, it really presents with us a picture of how God embraces us. It's really as clear of a picture as I know. One thing I've noticed since moving to Washington is the lack of severe thunderstorms. Now, I know we had some, some thunder on Tuesday night, but that was not a thunderstorm. And part of me misses a good thunderstorm and the excitement that it brings. A few years ago, a line of really strong thunderstorms that kind of barreled down on West Michigan on a Saturday, and Tara was working and I was home alone with the girls as the tornado sirens went off, which is a rarity in West Michigan. And thinking I was trying to do my girls a favor, I told them to quick go get their bicycle helmets and put them on, and we headed downstairs. And we turned on the TV and the weatherman said, if you're in Hudsonville, which is where we live, go to your safe place now. Thinking about that makes me wonder, what is our safe place? When the storms of life threaten us, when we don't know where to turn, where do we go? Of course, there's only one truly safe place, and that's in the arms of God. And that's why devout mothers pray for their children, and they pray that their children would, would come to know who Jesus is. Friends, today we celebrate our mothers, and, and one reason is that they show us something about God. As a mother never forgets her child, so our Father in heaven never forgets his children. So this week, since I, I think it's true for all of us, we all have a little bit extra time on our hands, a little bit more opportunity, why not take the time to write a letter or even a, a brief note and thank your mother for never forgetting you, for always having you in mind. If your mother is no longer living, why not write the letter anyway? It would be a great way to, to pay tribute to her for what she has done, how she has blessed you. It may help you, and I think it'll help demonstrate what we all know about our mothers. They never forget their children. And neither does God. Let's pray. God, this morning we are thankful that you have created us in such a way, you have, you have designed us to be and to be a part of a family. And today we celebrate the, the many women in our lives who have loved us and supported us and who have cared for us. Lord, we are thankful for those godly women in our lives, these wonderful women who have shown us who you are, who have made you known to us more clearly. We're thankful for the, the passion that they have for you and how it has helped us discover you. And they remind us that you never leave us, you never forsake us, you, Lord, you never forget us. Lord, thank you for these blessings. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for worshiping us with us today. I hope today is a time for you to connect with each other and your family, uh, being thankful for your loved ones, for your, uh, your mothers and your spouses, and the, the many blessings you've been given as a family. And I hope, too, that that's a reminder that God never fails. God never leaves you. God will continue to walk alongside of you in the journey of life. Have a great day, friends.